in your project do you follow medallion architecture yes we do have like a couple of uh, scenarios where i have to get the medallion architecture in place you no know, to get the your uh, refined data for the dashboards or tables so in your project mostly like you get the data from bronze layer and you do the your etl analytics work in the silver layer so first we'll get the raw data either in terms of files or tables so in some cases it will be files where we get all the files in s3 bucket you know you need to access those and build the raw tables on top of those that would be our bronze layer so from there we'll have the business uh, transformation like getting rid of unwanted data and applying filters on top of those data so we'll have you now refined data in next level of a layer like which is silver layer so once we have the data refinement here so we will build business logic on top of these tables and then we will have final set of tables in the gold layer actually so gold layer will be the final layer obviously this is with respect to files and also in terms of tables we have the similar structure only that data size will differ actually. in terms of files it will be relatively lesser but in terms of the data size and the table size counts would be more So in a data engineering project, the data quality is a very important component. So how did you implement data quality in this project that you were handling? So basically, like as I mentioned, we have daily data coming. So we need to make sure the data that we are receiving. So it is like the only data that we are extracting, right? So let's say if you are having thousands of data, we, yesterday you got thousands of data. Today also you are getting thousand and twenty data. But now you need to make sure that you are only extracting the twenty data out of the thousand and twenty records, the latest one basically. So in that case, we have this incremental logic in place wherein we are just only making sure that we are extracting the required data that we need. Once the data is extracted, then what we are trying to do, we have some primary columns that cannot be null at any point of time. So we need to make sure that we don't have any null in that in one place, and then we are doing some kind of duplicate checks as well. Since our data is an outage-based data, I mean dealing with the electrical utility, so we need to make sure in an outage we should not have more than one meter ID. So in an outage we can have only one meter ID because meter is specific to particular home, and we cannot have one meter to two different homes attached to that particular region. So we are making sure that we don't have duplicate records. We are again checking some kind of schema check since we know that we are not going to have schema difference, but also more layer of security we are checking that the data that we received is the static one that we are loading to. So these are the primary checks that we are you know involving in right now. So suppose you are appending a data set. So you are doing sure. an incremental load every day. Yeah. It's a refresh that is happening. How do you ensure that the data that is coming along every day is not the same data that is already existing? For that, we should also be using that target table, and we can perform a left anti join on that data, and to fetch all the new records which are being present and that are not duplicated. Then targeted data frame we can use append mode to write it to the data or table. So the, your left anti join will be performed under like what scenario? Like what What would be your column combination? Like, do you check the left antigen with the whole row as such, or do you do like with a certain set of columns? We can just uh, pass the primary keys primary. for the left antigen. Okay. Okay. Any scenario where you don't have uh, the primary key in incremental load? Yes. Yes. How so, are you handling that? So in that scenario, we need to go ahead and check if there are any other uh, columns which can be used as a primary key, or you, you know, we can use a combination of uh, one or two columns as a composite key, and uh, we can go ahead and check if the data is consistent. For example, the higher date of an employee should always be uh, more than its birth date. So maybe we can consider that particular, uh, you know. we can create a new i would say new column out of that which will be uniquely identifying each of these uh, records and then we can consider it as a primary key so we need to make sure to take that particular column which has uh, high cardinality in order to go ahead and uh, make it a primary key in in the absence of a primary key what do you understand by normalization normalization is the way uh, what we can say is to arrange the data in such a way so that you know only is to uh, reduce the amount of redundancy on the data for example if you see the sales table or product table so whatever the sales table product table that will have a lot of redundancy related to the orders and items whatever the various customers has purchased so in order to reduce the redundancy we divide it into some small small tables uh, which has some links on the basis of their ids that we can say as dependencies we have multiple uh, normal forms right we have one nf then we have two nf three nf and so on yes. as we move up the ladder like which is better like one nf is better or four nf is better if i just talk about it or three nf is better so what i can say is like it completely depends on the use case what use case you have so when it comes to the transactional db or when it comes to the relational db or when it comes to the analyzing those tables so what we can say is for transactional db definitely the four nf will be good higher normal form are 
good but mostly when it comes to the analyzing those tables when we will analyze it so it will have a lot of complex joins that may use a lot of resources behind the cloud and may affect the query performance so for that you know only the one normal one nf will actually work which will reduce uh, all those problem related to resource utilizations as well as the complex joins that uh, all we can avoid and it will help us to analyze the data very easily Coming on to this only, the transactional DB and the reporting DB that we just talked about. What do you think? The snowflake schema kind of a design that we have in data modeling. For which DB it is suited? Like, is it more suited for a transactional DB or is it more suited for a reporting DB? So, a uh, snowflake uh, schema, it is mostly as we see the structure of snowflake schema, which involves fact tables, and then there may be another dimension tables connected to the one dimension table. So that actually makes complex for reporting DB. But for transactional DB, yes, that. Snowflake schema is very well suited because, as we have discussed before, like it gives you a good weight for absurd operations. But when it comes on upon reading the data, so then again it in- involves a very complex joins which may uh, use a lot of resources behind the scenes in the cloud. What do you understand by column stores? What happens is columnar based is it uh, put the data in terms of columns. Every column is uh, coming in a one sequence. So the main use of this is while writing it has to make uh, use of this. Yeah, okay. First I have to put that column there, that value there, that value there because but while reading it is very very effective because if we make uh, use of subset of columns, it won't have to scan that to twenty columns. Just mm-hmm. those subset of columns it will scan and it can make a uh, effective use of that. Can you briefly explain me what is a cap theorem? For NoSQL databases, cap theorem is something which says that a distributed system can provide us either of the two topics. So one is consistency, another one is availability, and the other one is partition tolerance. So by consistency, it means that the data in a distributed cluster will be consistent throughout from the source to the target. And uh, by availability means it will be available in each different layer by the different teams. And by partition tolerance, it means that even if there is a network failure, the system is able to run properly. But then yes, we cannot get all of these in a single single system. System because we are performing everything in cloud or network, so it is not possible to get three or three in a particular place. Either of two is present in a distributed system. Can you explain what is hash function? Let's say we are taking it as a modular function as a hash function. Mm-hmm. So hash function is a unique way to just identify different different transactions in one. So let's say if I am taking a modular function of four now if four order IDs are there, one, two, three, four. Now that for first order, the hash value will be one. For second order, the hash value will be two. Third, it will be three. And again, for four, it will be zero. So basically here, the hash function is the reminder. So for fifth order ID, again, the hash value will be one. So the first and fifth will be kept in a one group. Now, whenever a new transaction comes for query, now we know which bucket to access because the hash function will just find the modulo, the reminder. And now the bucket will be identified. And now we know that okay, we have to search this uh, in this bucket only. So it also helps in querying this hash function. Kind of a way to differentiate the different different data points into the one unique set, basically, so that the querying becomes easier. Within ET, what is slowly changing dimension? So slowly changing dimension uh, is a concept. So basically, when you have a certain dimensions which evolve or changes over time. So like uh, example, a customer address, right? Does, he does not change this frequently. So it changes over time. So those are slowly changing dimension. In ETL, we have majorly three types. Those are type one, type two, and type three. In type one, you just maintain the current version. So you delete the older data and just maintain the current version. Suppose in case a customer is his recent address, you just mention the recent address. You don't need the previous address. So in that case you'll use SAD type 1 and in type 2 you basically track all the history of the customer right? suppose in case you want to track all the mobile numbers that the customer had so in that case you will use SAD type 2 so generally we add certain columns like flag or versioning which basically helps us knowing that okay this particular record has changed over time there are inserts or updates in this table you maintain that and in type 3 you maintain generally the current version plus the last version like the previous address and the current address only so these are the three major types depending on the use case you implement those types uh, what are SCD type 2? Uh, let's say if we have, we want to keep the historical data of mm-hmm. any entry, then we can use SCD type 2 and it is basically adding new and new rows for that particular entry and maintaining a time-based thing or something which will tell that this record was valid from this time to this time 
and there's a new entry for that particular record which will tell that it is valid from the this time to and if it is a current record the valued from will be some date and valued to will be let's say very large date let's say 9999 so that is what we can say basically it is new rows getting added for the same entry just to show that the historical uh, we can say the historical part we to keep a representation of yeah What is yeah. left entry join and difference between left join and left entry? Okay, so in left join, what happens? All the records from the left side of the table. I mean, there are two tables. One table is written before the join keyword is mentioned, and one table is written after the join keyword is mentioned. So the table to the left, all the matching records as well as the records which are not matching are present in the output. That is basically the left join. So all the records from the left side of the table are present in the output. Now left entry is what? In left entry, all the records which are not present in that table will come so let's say we have 10 records in the left side of the table and we have five records in the right side of the table which are present in left side so when we perform a left entry we will mm-hmm. get five records from the left side of the table which are not present in right side basically the non matching records okay.